we have to? I'll try not to look at my phone as much as possible because we're on a live stream. Well, you guys don't need your phone. You're being inter I need to read the questions. <laughs> yeah. Morning, ladies and gentlemen, audience at home, audience in the, in the live audience. Uh, welcome to Campus Party 2013. This is day four, day three of Campus Party. To kick off today, we have a interview with Anga Hernandez and Antonio Del Rio. I'm going to be hosting this interview with the two. A bit of a change to Campus Party. So my first question to the to Angel. Let's start with Angel first. Sorry, Antonio. When was your when was tour, when was your first campus party? Uh, l let me start with something else. Let's start saying who we are and Sorry, what, what we are doing here. No, that's this, fine. This is the work experience. That's for fine. Me. That's fine. Um, you guys, well, all the people we have here, they probably all know who we are. But just in case, I'm the robotics advisor for O2 in this case and, and campus party, and Antonio is the modding advisor for um, for the campus party here. So now your question was, when was my first campus party? I think it was 2007, somewhere in there, 2007, when we actually started having a, a, a big core of um, content, actually. Before that, we didn't have any, any content. We just had people uh, sharing content and you know, sharing uh, data, playing games, and so on. But in 2005, 2007, we started having different areas. He started having the modding area. I started having the the robotics. So mine was 2007 when everything was already organized, and there was someone else organizing. Alejandro Alonso, amazing guy. He left it, and he left it in our hands. And since then, we've been we've been doing it. What about you, Antonio? Yeah, I think I began like two years before Angel. That should be 2005. And uh, thing is that uh, before that campus party was uh, like a major LAN party event. We had the computers and what he said about the data and the sharing, people getting in, just you know, uh, just to share things and to be there. But we had a great idea. Well, I didn't. Uh, in, in fact, we had Miguel Angel Esposito and Isabel Rosado. They were the directors of the content and campus party by that time. And, and they thought that, you know, that the, the contents, the, the talks, the conference, the workshop, that should be improvised and, and shared between campus areas too, but we also needed to have some some schedule, some 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 real good speakers. And uh, since I, for that time I was running my own community, I'll tell you about later, about uh, also not just modding but overclocking and hardware. They they make us a call and they tell us if they if we wanted to come here and just to, to try to, to teach people some, some of the things we did. Not just to teach the people who was already interested, but also try to create new communities and, and share the hobby and, and tell people what we did and why. So we could get the community growing like, like for all. So um, I've, I've been doing this for, uh, since 2005 in different campus party and it, like, it, each one is different, you know. You do the same, uh, the same kind of content but for the kind, different kind of people, different countries. So it really changes a lot and that's, that's a real good, good thing to do. So you both have been very involved with Campus Party over the last few years, eight years for yourself and about six years for yourself, seven years, eight years, seven, eight years, nine in between. So how has your roles changed from when you first started to now in 2013 to do a campus party? Okay, when we when we began like we had no idea on how we were really going to do it. I mean, we we knew what we wanted to achieve. We wanted people to come here to see what we what we do, to learn and to get in, interested in the in the hobby so they could go on uh, for the year. I mean, campus party is just is only a week. So in a week you cannot learn the whole thing so what you can do is you can get interested you can you can see something and you can say okay i want to learn this thing so we had the idea in our minds of what we wanted to achieve but we didn't really have the the experience to do that exactly as we wanted so first year it was just like a like a test of how we would do so okay we we knew what we needed if we wanted to teach we would need a, a teacher a speaker but we, we weren't sure about how, if the people were going to be interested or not. So we appointed like the stages, like very simple ones at the beginning. It's just, you know, some place you know what's a stage. You put the, the schedule on the website so people know where to go. But uh, you, you were not sure, you know, people were like, imagine like the, this stage zone was close 
to the life quarters where campus heroes are, are seated. So uh, you don't know if people are going to be interested or not. So many of the times you just begun and, and the people get close to, to, uh, to, to, to where you were. Uh, but you really don't, you didn't know. But first time we did it, it went well. I mean, people got interested with the talks. They wanted to meet their speakers. That's something which was very important at the time. Is like people got a lot of contacts on the, uh, a lot of connection in forums, mostly forums. We didn't have the social media. We didn't, Facebook was not as important then, and uh, Twitter either. So people did, uh, knew each other by the nicknames, just the nicknames. And Campus Party was a perfect time so they could meet together because in Campus Party, well, this is a European edition. You've seen we have people here from all over the countries. But the uh, first one we did, it, it was in Spain, in Valencia. Uh, it was just the same. We had in Valencia, we have people from all the regions around, around the country. So the it was really the first time they could be here and meet. So this was really important to make this because for the next years, we already knew who was interested in Campus Party and we could ask them, what do you want us to, to show you? What, what do you want us to teach? Who do you want to come to speak? And all, all this network we built, is in, it, it was like the foundation of what we are doing now. So that would be like the, like the beginning. Like We didn't know how many people are going to come. We, we know how many Campus Heroes we were going to have, but now if they would be interested. And this is, the, this is like the demonstration, like the, 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 the success that, that it was, because really people interested in the stages when you see like okay you have many many different people talking about different topics some one of some of them like in my case like it's case more than a double clocking there's like a an each you say like a but for for a, most, a small amount of a small group of people but when you have a, a, a keynote speaker it's completely full it's really impressive how people is not just only interested on in getting online and like sharing things and there but also to 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 come here to to learn so i let uncle go with the experience too because <laughs> So the question was, um, what was the, our, our role when we started? How, how's right? the role how, changed, how from, changed? Yeah, when you started until now. I started as a campusero sleeping in the, in the camping area, as you guys. Actually, I was living in London when I started. Yeah. And my friend Maria del Pozo, she was not involved in electronics or robotics or anything related to this at all. She was not even interested. But um, we... I don't know, I was living here, she was living in, in Madrid, and she was like, why don't we go to this place? It looks like you will like it. I knew nothing about Campus Party by then. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I, we saw some advertisements of camp, um, Campus Party asking for people to help, volunteers. It was the first time we were having actually people to um, helping in the content area. And I was still living in London. I was, uh, I was like, yeah, sure, let's go there. We both went to the, our first campus party. She built her first robot, and I was just a volunteer in the robotics area. Uh, the next year, I, I got a little bit more involved, and I kept evolving. But I went from being a campus hero to actually manage the, the um, uh, robotics area, not just here, but in pretty much all the additions we have all around, except for a couple ones. But... Whatever they need, some contacts or some content and so on, I like connecting people. So I just take the friends I have around the world and bring them here. So that's, that's how our roles evolved. Um, other than that, you, can, you guys are in here and I encourage you to get involved in the organization somehow. Help us. Meet some people and bring your friends. Tell your friends how cool this is just because you can share content and learn a lot from the people we're having here. So this is a little bit of like growing up, right? Mm -hmm. Like you start, you start small and you start growing up and you end up meeting a lot of very interesting people. So, so um, you can keep the mic okay. if you want. It depends how you guys want to do it. But... Um, so you've both been involved in, you've been involved in robotics from 2007? Yeah, pretty much. And you've been involved in modern since 2005? So you've seen different communities grow. So in the time scale, how have the communities changed in growth and coming together? I'll start. Uh, 2000, I'll go back a, a couple of years, 2005. In 2005, I, didn't, I, I was not in Campus Party by then. But there was no communities. Okay. We didn't have any community related to robotics. We had universities. They were working on robots. And we had people very interested in that. But they were not organized. So in 2005, there was like five or six people having dinner one night. And they were like, we should, we should organize this. 
we all like robotics, and this was in Spain, in Valencia. And we didn't have any foreigners yet. We didn't, we didn't, um, we didn't go global yet by that point. So th they were like, yeah, we should organize ourselves. And this was during a dinner. And they started an, uh, uh, um, an association, ARDE. It's called ARDE, uh, Asociación de Robótica y Domótica de España. So it's like the National Robotics and uh, Home Automation um, from Spain. They are pretty big now. And they started in Campus Party, like many other communities that actually started in Campus Party. But at the beginning, we had, at least in robotics, we had nothing, really nothing. It was, it was not like now, we all have internet, we have internet in our phones, we have internet in our tablets, computer, we have the Google Glass now that is going to bring a lot of internet to our eyes. So there was nothing by then, and we've, we lived that we've been living that that growing up of not just us but the um, the whole community so it probably was something similar to you I don't know thing is like uh, the, he said Angel that the people interested in robotics they were not into associations but but they went together in the universities like you had to to, to, to learn somewhere and maybe they close together there but you know when it came here there was like community but in the case of modern overclock and it was kind of different because what happened is that the most of the case, case models, they were just like uh, like loners. I mean, they, they learn by themselves. They 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 learn how to do themselves, and they just began their projects and their own uh, workshops and their own uh, you know garages. Uh, well, and they build their things, but they weren't just thinking about getting together to each other. So it was you know like like something they thought they they needed. They would just say, okay, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to learn. They learn to do that. They try themselves. And then they, 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 they brought their projects to, to Campus Party. And that's something great happened. It's, it's that they, they got together and they, they, each, each of them, they, they realized who, who each other was. And, uh, and they began not to make like association in order like to, to make things, big things together, which happened after, but just to, to try to learn from themselves. And just to, to make the, this, this kind of content sharing, the, the, not just during Campus Party, but also during all around the year, so they got organized in, uh, in other communities. First time, uh, most of them were based on the, on the UK. There was like a bit tech on, or maybe on the US too. But people from some other countries, they, really need, they didn't have the place to like to go and, uh, and get together. And this is what they, what they got on Campus Party. And after that, uh, like two, maybe two years ago, what we found is like that there was not just like a single project for a single guy, but we even had like a huge case mod project, which was huge. Like it was like the the Atomian in Brussels. It was like I, I believe like five meters side uh, at the least. It was really big, and it was made not by one people, but by by a group of people who has joined together for the for the project. So I, it was really we were really happy with that because it had never done before. Yes, we we gone from from loners to people who got together to make big projects. Not just the big things that you need a lot of people to build to, to make the assemble, but also when they needed to do something which was even a small size, they needed like some specific knowledge. Like one was able to do the, the 3D, uh, well, not 3D printing of course, but the, you know, the 3D modeling for the, for the laser cut. Another was able to build the, the water cooling. And when they, they, they got together too, because we had uh, like very, very nice uh, case modding contests where you got uh, prizes, like in gaming stadium, you get money if you're the best. So they thought, okay, what well, if I if I'm by myself, I may I may win or my, I may not. But if I know the other guy who put me my competitor, but like the second best, what if I join him and we build something together? So we were more, more, we were more, most likely that we will get the, the first position, meaning the first position, not just the money, because obviously case mod is not something you do for the money. You know, it just don't make any sense. It's much more expensive on the materials and on your time, even if you have the sponsors than the money you're gonna get. But I mean, you're the best. So you get like, uh, okay, I won the biggest case modding uh, competition in, in the country. So that's a good reason for, for joining together and try to make those kind of, of groups. For the Camposeros, would you, um, they're obviously they're in this, they're, a lot of them would have been in the same position as you were in 2005, 2000, 2007. What advice do you offer them for now? If you had three, top three things to say, Camposero, this is what you should do to get to the next step. What would you say? Okay, f first of all, I would say you have to try to meet the people is in here. 
I mean, it's not just the campuseros who are around. You just go, go around and ask, what are you doing? Very close, I'm, I'm, uh, where, where I move around, last in the worship area, there's a guy who is from Romania, I believe, who has like a, well, there's another one from Spain too, who has like a, a robot hand that moves. And I really don't know a lot about robotics, but you know, the hand that takes the things, it's quite impressive. So I, I just go and ask him, what did you do? How do you do it? Because, you know, maybe there's some technique that he's using, which is pretty simple. He can just try, tell me where do I learn, and I can apply it to some of the other things, uh, some of the projects. So that was my first suggestion, just like try to, meet, to move around and meet Campusera from all over the country, not just because you're learning things, also you're making friends, and that's good. And second thing is like, also, it's, it's like an emergence with the first one, but it's different. Is you have to try to, to, to talk to speakers too. I mean, they're really down to earth guys. When you have here like a talk, and it happens usually, like you have a talk for someone who's really, you know, like an editor in a big magazine, what is two o'clock yesterday in astronomy, and you see him in the stage with a great presentation, and you see, okay, this guy, he really knows a lot, and okay, he's gonna just come uh, and say his piece of speech and then go, no, that's not how it works. You can, you're completely sure you can come down. Okay, okay, hi, my name is, An my, guys, my name is Antonio, I'm a campusero, and uh, I think your, your, your talk was really interesting. And uh, so maybe you can just, uh, you can just talk like, like a little bit and he would be happy to know how do you feel about the presentation, well, what do you like, what did you didn't like, if there's something you didn't understand, because it's gonna make him, his knowledge better, it's because when a speaker comes here, first thing he wants is to get the audience engaged and to get the audience, when, when, when he's done, so he knows people got the meaning of what he was saying. So he, when he gets the feedback, the feedback, it is great, but also, he, he, you can tell him about his project, he can give you your ideas. Really, they, they don't bother to, to take the time. But maybe one is in a hurry, you know, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm really sorry, I'd like to meet you, but I'm, I really have to go, have my train going, here's my car, you can drop me an email. And most of the time, it works, it works. You can tell him about the project. Okay, sometimes you say, okay, yes, congratulations, but uh, okay, I like it. But some of the times, he can like, really help you, or like uh, really encourage you, or send you an email. Okay, I'm not into that, but I can send you an email of a friend who does that, so you get like a, a bigger, high quality content of, of networks. And the, three, the third thing is like to go, to go to workshops and uh, try yourself. It's, uh, talks on the stages, they are good. You know, you hear what other people have done, how they done it and on why and that's good. But it's just much better when you go to a workshop and you try yourself. It's like uh, most of the things we do here, like an example overclocking, at first it's like kind of, you know, people that some th stuff that some other people do. But, uh, and, and it looks like kind of difficult, but it, it's just not, I mean, you just can get the basics in two hours. Not the basic to do yourself, but maybe the basic to begin to learn, to learn and do it yourself when you're back, back home. So that's about the three things. Meet the campuseros, meet the speakers, and also get, in, get involved in the workshops. Thank you very much. I think you said everything. <laughs> four, four, <laughs> four, five, and six. Eight. Um, no, I, I actually don't have anything better to say. You're here in Campus Party, and there's many people that just come here and don't actually live the experience. I would say try to live the experience, you know, and not, not just meet the campuseros. Of course, you have to meet all the campuseros, and you will, you will have people around that are also building robots or have some other super cool projects. You can actually bring the knowledge you have. You might not know anything about robotics, right? But you can know, you, maybe you are good at some, I don't know, cutting um, plastics and so on, like, like his people, you know? And when they come together, they create good teams. So the campus party is a perfect place to bring these people together and create and build teams up. So I would say those three are actually very good ones. <laughs> Meet the people. Don't, don't stay in the arena forever. It's good to stay for a while and have good talks there. But come here and check the, check the talks. And wait, not, not for us, because we're walking around all the time. So you don't have to wait here for us and ask us questions. But after any talk, they all are very happy. All the speakers are very, very happy and very willing to help you with everything. And they even come to other talks. And if, if you have the chance, try to participate and try to be more, you know, more active. Mm -hmm. And if you have an idea, 
just for a workshop. Just let us know. Let the organization know and say, hey, I, I might be able to organize something for next year. I might have an idea for a workshop. Why not? We usually have many campuseros actually are, um, um, doing some workshops and talks and so on. So I would totally encourage that. But that, that actually is perfect. This is about connecting people and connecting brains and bringing ideas. So don't just stay there and, you know, don't leave the experience. And, of course, the nights are good, I would say. It's not bad. So if you have the chance... Just hang out with the campuseros during the night. Once we finish here at 12, go wherever they are, they are or stay here in the arena. But the nights are very special, and that's when everything happens. That's when ideas come together. And I've seen a couple of companies actually coming up, coming from here, from a couple dinners, and now they are successful. So that might be another thing. So enjoy the nights. That's my, my advice. Don't, don't miss them. Antonio has something to follow up from that. Yeah, it's just a, a thing about what you say about sharing the sharing between the different communities, not just between a community, but the different stuff things to do. So what with uh, sometimes with robotics and uh, something that which like kind, kind of went on is like uh, we they found that we were I, I think that mothers we were better than they when it came to building things to build in the case the cases of the outside so we were able like to to show them how to build like fiberglass casing so you can put into the robots and make like do and make them look neat but what i really want to say about the uh, like uh, here's the four like the fifth i would say is something i just realized is that when you when you come to to campus party most of the time you're interested like in one topic i mean you you come here and you you are gonna check the conference in just one stage because you know you love robotics you belong to a to a it's your hobby and you belong to a, a robotics community so you don't check what's going on like in the social media contents or like uh, startups e-commerce or or whatever even astronomy and that that's would be what I, what I suggest to do like you just try you don't know that when when you're watching on the on the streaming or on the on the, the videos we, we upload I will have a quick look about some other stages, what they've done, what they say. But just, just kind of like can skip over just uh, really quick. Okay, I like the topic, and I'm pretty sure you'll find a few good talks of a topic that you will think that you were not interested at all. But you in fact you, you are, and uh, like you, you will begin to, to grow like a new like a new hobby uh, for sure. That's fantastic. Um, you both as a as you both are very experienced, so I'm going to ask you. What was your greatest challenge as a campusero? And what advice can you give to the campusero now about what challenges they have to face and how to tackle their challenges? Okay, so if you ask me about my personal challenge about here, like an advisor for a community. And let's go with community first. Okay, so if you're a community, you're, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to face a, 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 quite a few challenges. One of them I found, but well, first of all, I ran a hard work and modding and overclocking community in Spain. It's called Hard H2O. And uh, one of the challenges we found is like, first you need to get people interested. They, get, they found the community, you have the guys there. But then times, time passes and uh, people get older and they get jobs and they get married. They, they have children and they, 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 they realize they have a lesser amount of time that they needed them done before. So that, that's an issue, you have to keep it fresh. You, you have to say, okay, we're a group of great 15 friends and we love what we do, we really get along together, but you really need some fresh blood there because you know, people are gonna st still keep interesting, but you know, it's not easy when, when uh, for, for a few years, you, you, you call everyone to come here to Campus Party London. Some of them will say, okay, my boss wouldn't let me. Or some of them say, okay, I, I have a vacation with my wife. So well, one of the challenges you, you face is that you have to keep renewing the people because some of them, they also, like, they, it's not like they get tired of the efficient, but okay, they, like they think they got their top. It's like when a case, it comes to case modding, there's a guy who has built like five great projects and has won like several awards then he doesn't feel like the need to be the first because he has already been there, he's already been the first. So maybe say, okay, this year I, I, I won't have like three months to build my project. I'll have like three weeks. So for three weeks, what I'm going to do is not be on the same level as what I've done before. So I think I'd rather don't do it. So it, it happens. So it would be a challenge. Other one is like you need money and just a, a small amount, but you need it 
to run the hardware thing. An example, uh, that for the servers uh, and that, you need programmers. Maybe you can find a, a great friend who, who will be able to program the, the forum for you or something. You know, you have the CMS, so it should be pretty straightforward. But in example, when we had the, in a community, we had the, just like several like uh, privacy laws, like you've seen all around, they began here, like when you show up the, a pop-up for the, you need to upset the, the cookies and that. So for that, most of the time you'll need a lawyer and a lawyer to, to assist you on that. And the lawyer, he's going to get, he's going to want to get paid in, 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 in wires and, and CPUs. No, he, he won't, he won't take it. He, he really wanted the money. So, uh, so you need that. So how do you get it? So all the problem we've had with lawyers is that in communities you have the forums. And in the forums you talk about the stuff and you talk about brands. And some of the times you can have a campusero and a follower of your community, he can go to the, to the forum and say, okay, I tried this latest hardware and it's really bad, it's awful, I feel cheated, it doesn't work, it's the, the, the worst thing, so please nobody buy it. And then the company who makes the component, they say, okay, you have to remove it because, you know, it's not truthful. It's like a, they're like a t -t talking, you know, like talking bad about my product. So, and so you say, okay, f easiest thing for me would be, yes, I just remove it. Okay, so I don't get into problems with a big company. They have huge lawyers and they have a lot of money. They're gonna, they could get me in the, on the community in problems. So that would be your first reaction. But then you think about it twice and you say, no, it doesn't make any sense. The guy, he didn't say that he was, uh, it was a scam. He just said he bought one. He tried it. It didn't work. He didn't like it. He didn't get a, a great customer service. So he just complaining about experience he got himself. It's not like he's a competitor or something. Sometimes big companies, they are like crazy. They think that everybody who writes on a forum and complains about one of the projects is competitors. No, it's not. So then again, you have to talk to your lawyer, the community lawyer, and, and all, all the, so he needs the money too. So where do you get the money for our community? It's a good question. So what we do is uh, money comes from mainly one, uh, two, two, two ways. One will be like advertising. Is when well, if you have a, a robotics or money community, I'm sure that you need very specific supplies, like tools, like materials, uh, providers, like all, all the stuff. In in our case, with overclocking, you need motherboards, CPUs. So it, it kind of makes sense if a if a company like, an example, like Intel or Asus, he knows that really uh, enthusiasts of hardware are going to your forum, he has some bits. Maybe maybe it's not like a huge, you know, a huge media because it's are very, very niche, not a lot of people but you know, there are people who are most interested and in, uh, people they are going to be asked like if you, people know you're an expert you belong to the community, if a friend is yours and someone who's getting in the community and in the hobby, they, they need advice they're going to ask you, so it's not just about the, that you want to know the product, so for, for the community it's good to have yes, well, some a little bit of advertising, I mean not too much because but some at least to be able to cover the cost. So nobody has to, has to put their own money uh, on it, but you don't get the money, you don't get money too. So that, that, would, be a, that would be a challenge. Besides the keeping the, the fresh blood and, the, and to keep the, the advertising so, or something, so you, you have to need that, that money. You need also for the servers, programming, on any kind of need that, that may arise. And, and also a, a challenge would be like the, like the connection between between countries, like uh, okay, you can meet online, you can have great projects, but you need to get at some point, you need to get all together and, and be and be together in person. The campus party is a great time to do that, but you know the date is fixed. Uh, I cannot talk to my friends and let's say, okay, when do you think campus party should be? You know, it's not it's not well like that. You have this week, and we have to try to all to come together. So this kind of logistics, so make everybody to be here at the same time to take decisions and to find who's going to be your president or that kind of things. That's also a challenge for us. That definitely is the same challenge for for robotics communities. But I I would only add one: breaking the ice, breaking the ice between communities and and once you start in robotics I'm pretty sure moding is the same same way in many other fields but once you start building a robot you you're usually young you, these usually is young people and when you start you feel you feel you feel you're alone you feel like you're doing this by yourself and it's really difficult to explain it to your friends because they will not understand there's no way to explain it to your mom she will never understand why you broke that washing machine so it really is tough to keep that up. And breaking the ice 
for by yourself to get into a community and sharing your work and so on is a little bit tough and that's that's probably at least it was my first the, 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 my first challenge the one the first one i i had to face once i came to the first campus party i understood that there was hundreds of people building robots and i i knew a little bit i didn't I didn't know that much. I don't even know that much now. I, I just build stupid robots by now. So I just like to make robots for fun. But in, in, the, in these communities, are the, you will find very interesting people that actually have a lot of amazing knowledge. So breaking the ice and, and, and doing that for the first time is probably one of the most difficult things you can do. And here is, this is a good environment to do it because you have them right there. I have a couple tables with uh, three of the best and biggest communities in robotics. Let's make robots, Robotonets and out of there. Um, let's make robots is a very international one where we have people from all around the world. Robotonets is a little bit more German-ish uh, community where we have amazing projects and very nice people. And they like beer, so that's very good. And, and Arde is the Spanish one, so they have some content in English, not that much, but break the ice. If you're here, I would say that's another advice for the question before. Break the ice and go to them and ask. Oh, you're stealing the microphone he's, he's every still, time. He still wants to add. <laughs> yeah, I just found another one, which is competition between members of the community. And that means, like, uh, you have different people who are interested in the same topic. That they have like the same kind of project. You mean like you have like a robot or you have like a case mod, uh, and the problem the problem is that these people, if you had like a like a like a prize for a for a competition, there's gonna be just one first place, so just one, not for the community but for the guy who built the best robots. So what happens if you have a uh, you have a community? And you say, okay, I have a great project. I would like to show everybody how how is it going, how has it been doing it, so uh, wh how wh what the problems I'm facing, so they can help. So that's my community. I should be able to do that. I should be able to ask people in my community what do they think about my project before it's on the competition. But then they might think, well, what happens if I put this information there? And then another guy, another guy comes, gets my idea. He, he got the idea, he make it even better. So he will, goes to the competition and he get in the first place. So some of them, they are really, you know, that uh, it, that's not that much of a problem because they are not that focused on the first place. But also happened in overclocking. They are like a very a strict uh, ranking and uh, it's a website called HWBot where you have all the rankings. Every time you do time overclocking, you get like a result from a benchmark and you put it, you post it online and you see how well you did. You can be the first in your country, you can be the first of the world. Being the first of the world and the first fifth, of course, it really grants you that you would be nearly able to live doing nothing else but case modding or overclocking. Yeah, it's like, it just becomes like your job because you know yeah, you have proved yourself, you've, you've, you have shown you're the best. So when you're the best, you can get like like you can like you can sports like esports like it's kind of the same. You can live on that. Not many people do, but in, in overclocking you can do that too. It means that you get paid to go to events to do things to teach people, and also you have a sponsor, so you only use their, their brand. So there only can be a few who get to that kind of level. So sometimes they should be like uh, kind of reluctant to to teach people about the the latest the latest findings. I mean they can tell like they tell you like 90 percent of what they know which for more of us would be more than enough. The 90% of experts is quite a lot. But this 10 to 5%, sometimes they could try to keep to themselves in order just to keep their position to be in the best. So it keeps like the, the business running and the, they're still the, the best. So that's a problem. You can have to be careful. Just So people try to, to, to really communicate, but in a nice way. You know, you, you know people around your community, but if it's like a, an open community, so you don't have to log in to get in the forums. It wouldn't have any sense because we need to have new people. So it's just open. So anyone can come in and see how the guy, the guy is doing and try just to, to copy card. And, uh, that's and that's something you have to treat with with carefully. Thank you. Um, when you're walking around the campus, the campus, and you're looking at different campus areas, you mentioned let's make robots. But um, what 
model for you? What robotic have you seen or robotics have you seen stand out to you and why have they stand, stand it out to you, stood out to you even? There, there are amazing robots. There's flying robots. There's the robot you said that uh, oh, the, the hand. hand robot. Um, there's uh, hexapod robots. There's lots of robots, but there's one robot here in Campus Party, and it didn't exist a couple of days before. They built it here. This robot. I'm not sure who's making it. And I'm, I'm, I will ask the people here later. But there's one robot that it. It doesn't have anything special, but is made out of Coke boats, uh, Coke bottles. So they 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 took a, like four or five bottles of Coke and put them together with a couple motors, and it walks and it looks like a dog, and is made out of trash basically. So that 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 robot is not is not like a super amazing robot with high end technology. It's Coke. It's just bottles of coke that's it so that's that's the one i like the most by now i i haven't seen it working yet because they were working on it yesterday but that's one of the best ones just because they built it here they didn't they were not even planning to build a robot and suddenly they have one so that that was one of the best ones but going to the to the high end we have very interesting flying robots that seems to be the a trend right now building flying robots. I want to build a flying robot myself, but you need to be a very good programmer and you need to have your mind very clear. So I'm still working on that. I just like looking at them by now. That's one, that, that's the thing. Uh, first, be fair, before I come with my favorite so case, but for, yeah. mo for modding, for modding. Yeah, no. So uh, first, first, I'd like to say that I hope that uh, the flying robots, they get to get soon because I'm into e-commerce too. And we are really looking forward to robots to be able to work at delivery, to just to pick that up a parcel in one place and leave it on the other like during the same day. It would be great, so good luck with that, guys. Make it fly. Uh, about the, the case modding, uh, there's a project which uh, Hans Peter from Denmark, he showed that yesterday. And what is special about it, it like when you think about case model overclocking, what you normally think is like I'm gonna buy some pieces, like uh, I get the mother body here, CPU, GPU, I put them together, then I build a, a case around, I build my, I, I buy my cooler, my water cooling stuff, I buy the whole thing in my taste. It's like when you are like, uh, Say, well, when, when you make a new home and you place, you make it look nice. You mean you, you pick the sofa, the curtains. I mean you do have to do it yourself, but you place it in such a way it looks nice. So mo case modding, most of the time is just the same. You get the components, and then and the outside is what you build. Like you build a new case to 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 involve it. It could be like even a uh, anything with acrylics, like boot to be on the. So, but the difference about Peter's hand project is that uh, he made everything himself. Of obviously not the hardware, but the cooling parts. Like every water cooling piece, he made himself. He designed it on. Uh, he said he used it. Uh, he used uh, Google SketchUp because it was cheaper, and he he print, he made all the things. He even 3D printed some of the pieces he needed to be just uh, to be bespoke, to be to be custom pieces for for his. So uh, I think that was pretty amazing. And the other project, who was in Campus Party in Berlin which I think it has been by one of the most successful, by the way, is like a computer inside a desk. You have like a, a desk, real nice one with mm -hmm. aluminum alloy and it's all black. And you have like a, a no scratch glass on the, on the table. And it looks like, looks like a table, but on the inside you open the glass and you have your computer there. It really does look neat. So it's like something like anybody would really love to have. And with, it's also kind of easy to be able to, to change, to replace the hardware. So you say, okay, I spent like uh, 2,000 uh, euro on that. And uh, well, well, it would get old, like in uh, six months, one year, it would get uh, like tired. So I have to change the CPU. What do I do? They have to replace the whole thing. No, you just can open it and you just can plug new equipment in there. And that's really successful because it's, uh, it's been on production and mass production is going to be on sale. And that's great because, you know, you have like an idea you build for yourself, then it gets to, to some of the people. And, and also the, the one I, I say too, is the the one like uh, we had like the metal things that you saw over there, like a fish and a, and a, a fly too, that are like animals made of steel. 
Uh, what is interesting about them is like they are not. Uh, they, they were shown. They were uh, showcased in a museum of contemporary arts, and it's the first time that a case mod gets into a. A museum. It's like normally you had like sculptures and, and paintings, but for the first time you had a case mod to be shown, just not like a piece of equipment that you build for your own, but also to, to be shown to, to, to somebody else. Um, final question before we open it to the floor. You, we, you spoke about briefly how the internet has opened the communities for the campus areas to communicate better. What effect do you think that has on campus party? Is it a positive effect or negative that it means that we have the live stream so not a lot of campus heroes feel the need to come to a London or a Berlin when they're based in Spain or based in Berlin don't feel to go to Spain? Yeah, if you want to go first. Thank you. So I'm pretty sure it's completely positive because of two, mainly two things. First reason is like you have the community, you have the campus heroes here. But when you're in a community, online based, you know people by their nicknames or Twitter accounts or you see their profiles in the forums and you talk to them but in not in a personal way. You don't really know the person. It's as Angel said, the night campus party is special. So it's not like you just know what he does, like in a, in a very public way, like he writes something and then you answer, okay, you, you did great, I think you should do that. But then when they come here, they really get friends, they really get close together, so they just can sit for a while and, and, and talk about other things, not like, not like just uh, yeah, about the, this, this, is, this, is, this project, but also some other things. So that, that builds that kind of relationship that really can go on, not like for, yeah, for, a, for a single project. So that really encourages the thing. Uh, so also when, when you said, uh, like, we have the, 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 the things we do here, they get streamed and they also get uploaded and you can watch it on YouTube like any time. So, uh, yeah, it, so maybe it could be the risk that you say, okay, why should I go to Campus Party if I can have all the content like in my home? Okay, so it's just like uh, different things when you can come here and you can talk to the speaker. So it just really changes everything. He will be here. On the, on, the, on the YouTube, you can see what people have asked. Okay, okay maybe you have the same question, that's good. You see what they say. That's good, but you're not able to meet him. When when the video is is soft, then it, then it's soft. But here you can come down and you can introduce yourself, so that really makes things really different. But of course, it is great. It is online because it also works in the opposite way. It's like a, this video. If you say you see just one talk, not because you're a campusero and you are here to, to just there to see the talks, but maybe you found somehow you just type something on YouTube and you find a, a content on the stage. You're just talking about some, looking about some project. For example, we are going to be hosting a, a water and cooling uh, demo here on the stage this evening. So maybe someone just types water cooling and then he gets the video on YouTube. He sits, he watches the show, okay, okay, I, I really did learn a lot. What, do they, what else do they have? And he checks and says, oh, that's good. They really have a lot of things here. So maybe, just he knows what Campus Party is. Also, maybe he just get to be in the community of Campuseros. Or he gets inside there, he signs up. Then, like three months later, then he gets an email and I say, we're going to be having Campus Party in London, Berlin, Madrid, whatever. Okay, I know about it. I, I, I signed on that website. It's about the video, they have the conference. So let's see what they're going to have a look. Uh, let's see what, what they're going to do. Okay, they're going to have a topic, uh, a, a talk on this and that and then. So, okay, so I must go. So it's really good. So it works just both ways and obviously in a positive way. And finally, Angel, your thoughts? Or did Antonio cover everything you said? Uh, well, you know what? Not related at all. But when we were coming this morning, he was like, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about. Because, you know, we're, we were a little bit late, sorry. And, and he was not even sure what he was going to talk. And you've been talking for <laughs> 45 minutes yourself. But it's good. It's good. Actually... I was going to say the same thing, man. Um, I don't think it's negative. There's no way this can be negative. Having the live streaming is awesome. And we have been doing this for two, three years now. And we have a lot of questions. I actually get a lot of questions myself because I'm usually on stage. And I get questions myself asking about Campus Party in my daily life. Because they've seen my blog, they've seen my, they've seen a couple videos of me talking about robots on Campus Party and so on. So this is actually helping us bring more people and giving the people the opportunity to meet other, in this case, roboticists or motors or something like that. 
uh, this is definitely positive, not just for a campus party, of course, but our main goal here is to get brains together and bring the ideas. There was a, there was a, a, a thing we usually say, uh, we, we usually said in, in campus party, um, unimos talento, creamos futuro, right? I still remember that. And that means we bring, uh, we bring brains together and we create future. It's actually true that that's the main goal of campus party. So uh, that the internet is definitely very helpful for this. Um, we're going to open the floor. Of course, Antonio has something. He has say, something. Right? <laughs> if we could open the floor, yeah, Antonio. Yeah, because I have some, 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 some place to think too, and uh, <laughs> like a new, like a new say. So yes, very important. Now, when you upload the videos to YouTube, you can say, okay, I will be able to go to Campus Party London, but you only can go to one a year. Maybe you can go to two, a, two, two, two editions a year, but you are not gonna be able to be to every talk on South America and so all the other countries that they are there. So it would be like the only chance you have to see all the content that you have like in every campus party, not just the one which is closer to you, to your area or to your, to your country. So that would be another positive reason to, to have the, everything on the internet. Um, now, to, uh, now to open to the floor, Do, does anyone from the audience have any questions for either Angel or Antonio? You're still sleeping. We did a good job then. I see, I see three people there that if they don't have any questions, I'm going to introduce them. So they better have some questions. Uh, we have a question? We have one. Well, which, which were, could be the activities uh, between uh, the, the editions of the campus party, between summer and summer? Uh, you mean how you can keep going with the uh, activities? Yes, yeah. Um, once you start here, let's say you start with a, with a workshop, like the kind of introduction, introductory workshops we have to robotics, for example. You start here with that robot and you start building the robot. After campus party, the campus party is only a week. We love it, but it's only a week. And you, you usually have to wait for a full year to get to another campus party, unless you go to Mexico or Brazil or somewhere in there. Um, in the meantime, I'd say get online and get in touch with these communities, get in touch with Arde, Let's Make Robots, Robotonets, all the communities we bring here and talk to the people. You will find a lot of interesting projects to get involved in. So I would recommend you to uh, keep going with the activities we have here. And the activities we have, we have them for a week. But after this, the, the whole spirit keeps going. So I'd say keep going with the communities, keep going with the projects, or start your own, start your own blog and talk about your experience in, in Campus Party or robotics, or it doesn't have to be an advertisement about, about Campus Party, but talk about your experience building the robots and so on, and tell the people, because there's many people wondering how to start and so on. So any experience here might be a very good thing for other people. Besides, uh, Campus Party is releasing a new website, well, like a piece of website, which is Campus Zero. Uh, thing is that in there you will be able yeah, to create your own content without Campus Party edition. I mean, like you can set up, uh, set up like a, a hangout uh, talk with uh, about a, a topic of your choice, and you say you have like two or three friends assistant, but then it gets to get the fusion all over the Campus Zero's community. So maybe they can just like, join in there. So you get like Campus Party experience online, not just on uh, Campus Party. And uh, that, is, that is also a good, a good way to go. Are there any more questions for Angel or Antonio? So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us on our first session of the day. Next up, we have Colin Cunningham on a talk, his perspective on the universe. Join us at 11 o'clock for Colin Cunningham. Thank you. <laughs>